Monolith is removing microtransactions from Shadow of War. The game controversially was released with a bunch of microtransactions that allowed you to use the game's nemesis system, basically by paying money, and it kind of undermined the entire experience. But the game has been out for quite a while, as in, like, I think six months or something along those lines. And they're like, oh, hey, by the way, this actually affects gameplay. And so we're going to remove it to improve the experience for players. Six months after release, I don't think this is in good faith. Michael here with another topic video. So yeah, Shadow of War was not a game that I particularly wanted to get interested in because for the simple fact, I never actually played the original one. I wasn't in part of the whole hype train for it. And so maybe I'm a little bit biased here, but when it comes down to games with microtransactions, I just do not play them because it just comes down to the simple fact that I absolutely hate games that are just introducing microtransactions for the simple sake of it. There are good ways to have microtransactions, and this is not a good example of it. Shadow of War ended up using their Nemesis system, which was their kind of main drawing point from the first game, to where basically you would go through, these orcs would kind of fight you and stuff, and then you could end up taking them over and make them part of your army. And that was like the entire concept. And that was the really the only interesting sort of piece of gameplay that was really seen from that game and it kind of carried it through to success that said the second game kind of had the same system and they'd made some improvements to it as well as well, some other updates and things but they were also going to end up making it so you could buy these orcs in boxes literal loot boxes so you would get a box it would have an orc in it and these orcs had rarities and effectiveness and so basically what you were doing was you were literally paying to get stronger orcs and these orcs for whatever reason, would end up dying in multiplayer and others towards the modes. So you can end up losing them. And so even if you ended up buying them, they weren't permanent. And so this was just a way to kind of make it so that you could pad out the amount of money that you could end up earning on this game. Now, what are they doing to actually remove these? Well, for one, they're removing the boxes. They're removing the in-game currency called the gold. And basically they are making an update to make it so the end game isn't as grindy. One of the huge kind of criticisms that the game ended up getting was that after the actual main story of the game, it became a complete grind fest to actually get the so-called true ending. You had to go through this kind of siege mode that was basically almost endless unless you ended up paying money for these orcs to get strong orcs to end up going through it and actually having a supply. Otherwise, you would have to go out and grind over and over again to get orcs that were strong enough to complete these sieges. Now, of course, people were like, hey, you know, maybe they didn't. Maybe the game was supposed to be grindy. Now we actually have evidence that that was not the case. And instead, what they ended up doing is they made this a complete grind and kind of upped the difficulty just so that people would buy microtransactions. And this is actually what they said in their statement. If I go ahead and alt tab real quick. Um, just hold up a second because it's going to take a while. My capture was in a uh, full screen mode. This is going to be hard to read on the capture, so I'll go ahead and scroll in here. But basically, you could see here, they're actually talking about the Nemesis system. The core premise of the Nemesis system is the ability to build relationships with your personal allies and enemies. While purchasing the orcs in the market is more immediate and provides additional player options, we have come to the realization to provide this choice, risk undermining the heart of our game. This is the key point that every single critic that actually is credible has been saying for years. And when it comes down to microtransactions, this is not the only case where this is going to happen. And this is going to happen in games over and over again. We saw Star Wars Battlefront 2 just get completely obliterated by these microtransactions, and those ended up having to be removed as well. I haven't done a video on that because I'm working on a whole big design view thing for that as well. But again, this is a situation that's ended up happening. So why are they removing this? Because in that same blog post, if you were to look down at the bottom, you would also notice that they're doing some updates to the end game content. They're also adding in additional content, which is super cool. So so praises to them for actually supporting the game after six months. A lot of games end up dying after that. And so they're actually adding in content to a single player game. There are DLCs that are coming. And so definitely they're trying to make it so those DLCs will sell better. That is definitely not, you know, against the case. But at the same time, they're actually adding content to the game, which is nice. They're going to have new personalities, new skins, etc., etc. So that's good. That's actually pretty solid. But why are they actually removing these microtransactions? Well, the simple fact is nobody's buying them anymore and it's only hurting sales. This is something that we're going to be seeing in a lot of other games. There's a lot of older mobile games as well that end up removing their microtransaction systems because for one, they don't want to pay to have the servers up. They don't want to pay to actually have all these transactions. They don't want to have to worry about the taxes. They don't want to have to worry about all the other sort of stuff that comes along with microtransactions that people don't normally talk about inside the business world. This isn't a like act of good faith. This isn't like, oh, our players didn't like microtrans- No, if that would have been the case, they would have removed these microtransactions day one, or at least within, you know, the first few months. They wouldn't have waited six months. And maybe it's harder to do when it 
comes down to a bigger corporation, like if you're an indie dev or something along those lines, we've seen them turn around and be like, oh, well, these microtransactions really don't work that well. And so we're going to go ahead and flip it. Like there's been several cases to where indie devs who just don't really know much about the industry, they're not doing it to be toxic or anything, but they'll realize that, oh, like people are spending way too much on these microtransactions. We don't want them in our game because we don't feel right doing it. And it doesn't affect the game in a positive light. You know, they just did it because everyone else is doing it. It comes down to stuff like loot boxes, for example. There's a lot of devs that just kind of jumped on loot boxes because like, that's what everyone's doing. So it's the cool hip thing to do. And then they're like, oh, wait, we don't actually want this because it's a bad thing. And so maybe it's harder for a larger company to end up doing this. Maybe it's harder for a larger company because you have a lot more kind of things that go into it. Like you have to worry about the business side of it. You have to worry about your stockholders. You have to worry about your developers. You have to make sure everyone's on plan. You have to bug test it, et cetera, et cetera. And so maybe that's why it takes a little bit longer for these big companies to end up making these changes, but I'm not buying it. I, I 100% believe that the, the publisher WB or WB. Yeah. Is it WBs? I think it's Warner brothers. I don't like them. Um, but I think it's a case of they're like, oh, yeah, the microtransactions aren't selling and it's only hurting our sales and our reputation. It's going to be harder to maintain the game in the future with those microtransactions in. So they're like, you know what? Sure. Go ahead and just remove them and just update it. Because I, without a doubt, the devs do not want to put these microtransactions inside the game. Like if you actually love your game, you don't want to make it so that your players are getting a minimal experience. You want to make the best experience for your players as possible. And that is 100 percent every single good developers kind of motto when it comes down to good games they just want to make a good game and make a good experience for their players and so these microtransactions just make it harder and harder to create that because they are against the player they are not for player choices the pr companies like to say it is because they want you to buy them they are not optional they are like hey we want you to buy them and this is definitely what the hell is that thing i don't remember fighting this in borderlands 2 apologize uh that was confusing um, but yeah, so it just it goes down to this obviously wasn't a choice because now that it's going to be removed, they had to rebalance it. And this happened in Star Wars Battlefront 2 as well. And this happened in plenty of other games as well to where it's just, yeah, they're not optional. They want you to buy these. They expect players to buy them. And so when people end up going through and they're like, oh, well, it's just providing player choice, they're bullshitting or they're buying into public PR. PR spends a lot of money trying to make it so that certain things that should not be OK are kind of seen as okay we see this with a bunch of different stuff inside of society and i won't get into it because that kind of gets into political bullshit but for the most part yeah so why are they removing these they're removing them because one it's not really ethical to really hold on to them it's not really financially stable to really hold on to them either it's only costing them money i'm gonna end up dying jesus christ it, it costs them money to keep these going because they have to keep the servers going if they end up removing these microtransactions what they can do is just remove the servers for it and so they can move those servers onto other games and so for example let's say they're releasing another game which wb is always doing they could just be like oh well you can just use that server space for a different game and not really worry about it and so they're removing it because one the developers wanted to remove it i'm sure and so they're like hey can we do this like they've actually if you don't know the history of shadow of war they actually had like a dlc for one of the devs that ended up passing away and this is one of the reasons why i absolutely hate wb as well is because they tried to monetize a dead guy which is not cool but um deepest respects for them because the devs of the game actually wanted to put in dlc for them and the publisher's like oh we're gonna make it so it's paid dlc instead and then they were able to kind of like talk around that and get things to kind of sort out properly and it's a long story but long story short the devs actually give a shit about their game and so they push pretty dang hard and they were able to actually get quite a bit out of it and so i think this is another case to where the developers are like hey we want to fix our game because you guys screwed it up and they're like, all right, fine. You know, we're not making money off of it anyway, so go ahead. So, yeah, if you were looking to play Shadow of War without DLCs and rebalancing, all these changes will be out July 17th, I believe is what the thing said. It was up on the screen earlier, and you can end up finding it on a bunch of other articles talking about the subject as well. And so, yeah, I guess you could pick it up, but for me, it's too little too late. I didn't care about the game to begin with. Like I said during the video, beginning of the video, I didn't buy into the hype of the game. I didn't really care. I'm not a big Lord of the Rings fan. And so the game itself, I don't really care about, but the business practice and stuff like that is going to be relevant no matter if you like the game or not. So yeah, I don't know. It might be a good time to end up getting into it if they end up removing that, but I'm not going to say that it's a good faith action and they could easily add them back if they notice that they could end up making money off of it. So it's not like, oh my God, they're no longer going to have microtransactions in any future games because I did see somebody in some comments of these articles and stuff because everyone's reporting on it this morning, but I... I, you know, I saw comments to where they're like, oh, well, th does this mean that we're no longer going to have microtransactions in future Roner Brothers games? 
no chance in hell they're not going to do that. They're going to figure out some way to do it. And if it's not microtransactions, it's going to be something else. And it has been for a really long time. It's just become the kind of status quo for AAA developers. Now, if I'm wrong about that, that'd be absolutely fantastic. I would love to see a company, especially like WB, because I absolutely hate them. Like, I hate everything they did to things like Mortal Kombat, for example. Mortal Kombat, I love the Mortal Kombat games. They've completely killed the last two games. Injustice was a game that I definitely wanted to try, but all the business practices and stuff like around that, I just couldn't end up getting into it because I just could not care after all of that. And so WB has ruined a lot of games, and they have a lot of really shitty business practices, and they don't cheat a lot of their developers very well. I mean, they tried to monetize somebody who died. Like, that's, that's not okay. But yeah, so if they end up, if I end up being wrong about that and they end up removing microtransactions from all future games, then that'll be great. I would love to see that happen. Chances are it's not going to. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this one. And of course, you can end up leaving your thoughts and comments below if you want to end up, you know, talking about what's going on. Maybe there's some more information that I ended up missing because I am reporting on this very early in the morning. So they can end up having some future um, notes on this. All I have is that announcement that ended up showing off on the screen. That's all I have on this topic. And so maybe more stuff will end up coming out later in the day. But for me, yeah, it's it's a good move. I mean, I like that they're removing the microtransactions. It means that if other people want to end up buying it in the future, they're not going to be strict to the server. I'm sure they're still going to have server authentication because of course they are. DRM is just the thing they like to do. And so the pirates get the you know, better version because they don't have to worry about all that stuff. I'm sure pirates and modders already removed the microtransactions, though. In fact, there's actually a hack out there that gives you infinite, um, you know, in-game currency. So it's not like you can't get around the system by, you know, using those hacks to get premium currency, et cetera, et cetera. And just hacking and not really hacking the server, but like hacking around it so that it thinks that you're communicating with the server. So it does exist. I've actually tampered around looking at what they've ended up doing with that because I found it absolutely hilarious. But yeah, and of course, if you like my other styles of content, you can check out my website at michaelpstandage.com. Sorry, this outro is a little bit longer than usual. And of course, if you like gaming and you want to talk about gaming, you want to find some multiplayer matches and stuff. Lately, we've been playing some League of Legends. And of course, I'm always playing some Borderlands 2 and some other games. We also want people to play San Rancagra with us again because the online servers for that are basically dead at this moment in time. So if you end up wanting to join us in some multiplayer or just want to chat around about video games, maybe some modding or hacks I mentioned, then you can end up checking out our Discord called The Broken Chat Box. Links in the description for all of this stuff. And I will see you guys in the next video. This part of the map in Borderlands 2, by the way, game in the background is Borderlands 2, um, is so nostalgic because this is the map from the original game, except now it's all screwed up because of all the events that happened in Borderlands 2. And I love it. I'm glad I've reached this section for like the 50th time. I'm, I'm leveling zero.